good morning so in today's class uh, what we are going to discuss as we have done the chain of survival yesterday so we will go through the pediatric bls algorithm pediatric bls algorithm just like in the adult algorithm we have got certain steps it's almost the same there is nothing major but there are one or two major changes that you need to remember and also there are two algorithms that what we need to learn when there is a single rescuer when there is only one rescuer what is the algorithm and when there is two rescuers or more than one what to do so there are two algorithms that we need to learn today so we will learn this algorithm quickly it's an easy algorithm 10 to 15 minutes only it will take so as you know initially when somebody is suddenly collapsing you have to verify scene safety check for responsiveness shout for help and activate the emergency response so this is the same that for the adult as well as the pediatric so check for response shout for help activate the emergency system whatever is available then again depending upon the patient you can have three types of patients whatever we have discussed we can have one patient who has got pulse there is pulse and there is breathing then there is another category of patient who has pulse but no breathing no proper breathing or abnormal breathing no breathing or abnormal breathing and third group where there is no pulse no breathing so that is the third category of patient so that is what it is written here so as soon as you have checked for responsiveness look for no breathing or only gasping and check the pulse simultaneously so pulse check we need to remember that if the child is less than one year old if it is an infant you need to check the brachial pulse so that is the one difference that you need to remember so brachial pulse you can just see the cubital fossa this is the cubital fossa just medially just above the cubital fossa you can just palpate for the brachial pulse so again the time taken should not be more than 10 seconds minimum 5 seconds not more than 10 seconds so that is what you need to remember so if the child is an infant that is less than one years of age you need to check for the brachial pulse so that is one difference that for the adult and you check for the pulse and we have three category of patients so in adult patient we remember that we have to give rescue breaths every one rescue breath every six seconds but here for a child what do you need to remember one breath every two to three seconds one breath every two to three seconds so that is what it is different you can just remember half of that adult you can six is the three you can remember here so that is the uh, next important thing one change that you need to remember so if there is no normal breathing and pulse is felt you can just continue with the bag mass ventilation at a rate of two to three seconds you deliver one breath so that is the thing that you need to remember and here you have to monitor the patient unless the emergency support is arriving that is there is a pulse and the patient is breathing so when there is there is no pulse or no breathing you have to go to this algorithm before that there is one more small limb that is going down here see one more small limb that is important is that when pulse is felt but the heart rate is less than 60 okay so if the heart rate is less than 60 the perfusion is not adequate so heart rate it goes down less than 60 you have to with signs of poor perfusion means the child is drowsy altered mental child is shortly drowsy capillary refilling time is very much prolonged and you feel that the child is fragile and not at all moving floppy child and all those things that gives a signs of poor perfusion you have to initiate cpr so what is the indication to start cpr here the child has got a pulse but the heart rate is less than 60 with signs of poor perfusion you need not wait further for a cardiac arrest to appear and you need to start cpr immediately so that is the one thing that you need to remember and but if there is good perfusion the child has got good perfusion uh, and the heart rate is above below, below 60 you just continue monitoring the child and continue giving rescue breaths so that is what if it is written here and you have to every two minutes you have to reassess the child for the pulse if there is no pulse you have to immediately start cpr or if the heart rate goes below 60 and there is no signs of poor perfusions are the signs of poor perfusion as the you have to initiate cpr so this limb I'll just tell you again you have a patient who has got a pulse but no breathing you started with back mask ventilation two to three seconds you are delivering one breath then you assess the heart rate and you have found out that the heart rate is less than 60 and you can have again two possibilities there is good perfusion and there is no perfusion poor perfusion poor perfusion immediately start CPR 
good perfusion, continue your back mask ventilation and every 2 minutes you reassess the patient. Whenever the child has got a poor perfusion or there is no pulse, you initiate CPR. So that is this limb. So this one we were not doing in adult. So that is an additional thing that you have to remember in a pediatric algorithm. So that is the difference that you need to understand. Now when uh, we can go to the major algorithm, that is there is no pulse and there is no breathing. So there is no doubt what, what you have to do. You have to start CPR. There is no pulse, no breathing. So we have to start CPR and you are alone here. So there is only one rescuer. So you have activated the emergency response and you have called for help, but you don't have received any help. So you start at the CPR, but before that, there is one small difference in here. Yesterday I told you there can be two possibilities. It is a witnessed collapse or whether it is a non-witnessed collapse. So if it is witnessed, that you are witnessing the collapse. If you have not done activating the emergency response, ideally you have to do it before itself. If you have not done before, you have to activate the emergency response and see activating the emergency response, what does it mean? No, somebody has suddenly collapsed in front of you. You know that she was stable last second. Now she has suddenly collapsed in front of you. So you are alone there. So you, I have to go out of this room and you have to get for help. So meanwhile, what I'll do you now, I'll just go out of the room and I'll activate the response and I'll come back to her because she has just collapsed. So I have witnessed that it has happened right now only. Suppose imagine that I was not in this room. I was seeing her collapsed and lying down in this room. So at that time, I should not go out and call for help. I should immediately attend her, start at least say, uh, CPR immediately because we don't know the time frame, how much she has taken. So that is the difference. When it is an unwitnessed arrest, you have to initiate CPR. Then you have to uh, perform cycles of 30 compression and two breaths. And when the second receiver, you can change to 15 and then you can call for help. So that is the difference. Witnessed collapse and unwitnessed collapse. <coughs> if it is a not witnessed collapse, you one rescuer perform cycle of 30 compression and two breaths. When second rescuer arrives, you can make into 15 is to 2 and use AED as soon as possible. So when you are alone, remember that the ratio of 30 is to 2. When there is a second rescuer comes, it will become 15 is to 2. So this 30 is to 2 is one cycle of CPR. So what you have to do after two minutes, you have to again reassess the victim. You have to see how the victim is responding. The, there is no palpable pulse. You continue the same process till you get an AED and you connect an AED just like that in adult, whether it's a shockable rhythm and a non-shockable rhythm. So it, then it will go to the ACLS algorithms and all those things. So that is pretty simple. There is only certain changes that you need to remember. Word to check for the pulse. So that is the one difference that you need to remember. Pulse check is different. Pulse check. Then second one, bradycardia. So the heart rate less than 60, what do you need to do? Then third one, witnessed and unwitnessed arrest. And fourth one, you have single rescuer or one rescuer or more than one rescuer. So these are the basic difference that from your adult algorithm. And methodology also changes. So methodology depending upon the child's uh, this thing you can, there are two methods, you can either encircle the child, you can just encircling, thumb encircling method, you can encircling method, encircling method or else you have two finger technique. So two finger technique, you are just giving CPR like this in the center of the chest and while giving the compression, what are the things that you need to remember, the quality of CPR, what are the components of high quality CPR, rate has to be 100 to 120 then depth has to be one third the AP diameter andro posterior andro posterior diameter one third of the chest should be compressed then minimize interruptions if at all interruptions is there it should not be more than 10 seconds should be less than 10 seconds then avoid excessive ventilation and finally allow complete chest recoil avoid excessive ventilation and allow chest recoil so these are the again the same uh, components of uh, high quality CPR but only one difference is one third of the AP diameter is what there we said that you have to go for 5 centimeter or 2.5 inches it's one third of the andro posterior diameter. So that is simple you can remember and you can select whichever you want but what I suggest is when you are alone you can use two finger you can use your other hands for doing something maybe you take your mobile phone and call somebody but when you are more than one person you can do the encircling method whichever is comfortable you can do. 
See, depending upon the age of the child, maybe an eight-year-old child, you cannot do with both the hands. Maybe you need to do with the one hand. Maybe it's a larger, like more than 12 years, it's just like an adult child, you can, adult patient, you can go with the normal technique that we'll do for the adult. And rest, everything is the same. Where the movement has to come when you're doing the compression. But this one, only these two fingers, you are just compressing the chest and you are giving the uh, uh, compression while doing the CPR. And this is, you're using the two finger method. So that are the two differences that you need to remember. So this is the single rescue algorithm, whatever we have seen. Now we have to go for the more than one rescue, there is nothing different. You don't need to get confused with anything. So when verify scene safety, you have verified that the scene is safe. Check for responsiveness, that is again the same. And shout out for help, that is the same. First rescue remains with the child, that is the only difference. You are not going out for calling for help or anything. The first rescuer remains with the child and second rescuer go out and activate the emergency response. And he will go to get the AED. So the other person who is there with the patient, he will stay with the patient and he will do the assessment. And the other person will run and get the AED. That is the only difference. And again, three things holds good, all the same. There is no difference. Uh, three scenarios, there is pulse, there is breathing. Monitor the patient until an emergency medical help arrives. No pulse, no breathing, start CPR. The third limb, again, no pulse. There is pulse, but there is no breathing. Back mass ventilation, two to three breaths every one seconds. Heart rate less than 60, look for perfusion. Poor perfusion, start CPR. Good perfusion, monitor or till uh, the perfusion drops. You have to start CPR. Or there is no pulse, you need to start CPR. Every two minutes, you reassess the patient again and again. And you will come to the center limb. There is no pulse, no breathing. So what I have to do, I am the person who is along with the patient because I am alone here. So what is the ratio? It is 30 is to 2. When the other rescuer comes, you can make into 15 is to 2. So that is what it is written here. First rescuer performs cycles of 30 compression and 2 breaths. When the second rescuer returns, performs cycles of 15 compression and 2 breaths. So here there is no confusion of witnessed and unwitnessed. So whatever is the thing, there is a person here. So he can continue doing CPR. So when you are alone, only the witnessed and unwitnessed things will come. When you are alone, you are in a dilemma whether I should run out of this place and to call for help or whether I should start CPR. So you are witnessing something, you, there is some time. You know that this is what has happened right now. So you have got maybe 30 seconds, another 30 seconds, you can go out and call for help. Suppose you are not witnessing it. It is an unwitnessed arrest. You don't want to delay CPR by any method. So you just start CPR immediately. Then you call for help. That is the only difference that is there. But in two rescue, there is no unwitness or witness because the other person is already going to call for help and getting the AED. So two rescue, there is no confusion. So till the second rescuer arrives, you continue at 30 is to 2. When the second rescuer comes, you make it into 15 is to 2. And as soon as the AED is available, you connect to the AED and check the rhythm whether it is a shockable or a non-shockable rhythm. So that is simple. So single rescuer, when a pediatric BLS algorithm is asked for your exam, you have to write the single rescuer and you have to write when there are more than two rescuers. So this is very important because there is small, small changes only that you need to remember. So what are the changes? I will just tell, tell you again. One, word to check for the pulse. One thing, you have to check for brachial pulse if less than one year. And again, checking for response. In adult patient, we will tap over the shoulders. But in child, it's very small shoulders. You can tap over the shin. Shin. In the heels, you can tap over the heels and you can see uh, the child is responding or not. So that is one difference. Again, you can do. Then, word to check for the pulse. Then compression is only one third the AP diameter. Then method of doing the compression, encircling or two finger methods that you need to remember. Heart rate less than 60 without signs of poor perfusion, you need to immediately start CPR. The ratio, when you are alone, 30 is to 2. When there is more than one rescuer, it is 15 is to 2. So these are the smaller things that you need to remember. And also back mass ventilation, every breath you need to deliver over every two to three seconds, you have to deliver one rescue breath. So that is the difference between your adult and pediatrics algorithm and pediatrics algorithm i told it have two types you have single rescuer and you have more than one rescuer so this you need to be very very clear okay thank you